Join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey. For the ultimate shot. In this episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will join the search for the Big Tusker, a big elephant, along the shore of the Zambezi River in Mozambique, Africa. This is one of the poorest countries in South Africa. The local population of Mozambique has always been on the verge of death from starvation, even during the rule of the Portuguese colonizers. In the past, the coast of Mozambique was a medial point in the trade between the Middle East and India for transporting slaves and gold. After the state declared its independence in 1975, an exhausting civil war started. Wild animals were completely exterminated in some areas by organized poaching groups. A strong government came into office with some measures to take against poachers and this allowed international outfitters to come back. The last 10 years show unequivocally how the income from organized hunting expeditions in this region can create a full restoration of the wild animals in the country. Wiped off the world's map for big game hunting organizations, now the country made a comeback and offers extremely attractive hunting territories, some unexploited for decades. Here is where our search begins for our big mature bull elephant. In our expedition's base camp, we made a surprising discovery, an enormous hippopotamus skull. Yeah, its well, size yeah, was double the size of the normal skull next to it. That uh, was shot in the Zambezi River. I mean, just look at the size of that. Could be. Could be a world record of, it was least. not hard for me to imagine what a monster it was while still alive. This find raised my hopes. If such an enormous hippopotamus could be found here, what elephants roamed the swamps and woods along the Zambezi shores? Sign, fresh elephant sign, and we found an area yesterday where we came down here this morning. We got up extra early, came down, and all of a sudden, here on the trail is. The fresh tracks, which we'd been following for over two hours, led into a thick grove. The direction these elephants had taken corresponded to the data on the two big elephants which we had received the day before. The locals willingly helped the professional hunters because they knew that the meat from the kill elephant would provide food for several villages. For six days, our expedition tried unsuccessfully to find some fresh tracks of a big and true bull. But on our way, we crossed paths with impressive herds of sable, zebra, and all kinds of antelope. Nature hurried to fill in the populations of all of the animal species that were almost exterminated some time ago. Our consolation was that every day that we spent here even unsuccessful in our hunting, brought hope for the future of this country. In all areas where professional hunters were present, the animal populations were in the process of stabilization. 20 yards away from where the buffalo manure is, is fresh, hot elephant manure from the bulls. So we came in here this morning and I thought, oh, there's nothing here again. But they have been here, and you can see the muddy tracks here. Let's see the trail. The team's ready. We got water and food for our trek. We got a hot elephant track. And uh, Shorty's already gone with a 458. And uh, we'll see what happens. We're 
hoping the wind's in our favor. That's the, that'll be the key, whether we get in close enough for the shot. And uh, we'll stay on this track. We think during the heat of the day, they'll hold up somewhere in the shade and we'll be able to get in close enough if the wind's good enough. So stay tuned for the ultimate shot. That's a big front foot. The question is, does he have ivory? And we don't know, we won't know till we see him. The mud is still wet. Yeah. I don't think we're an hour even behind. It should have been dried with the wind already. Yeah. We'll see. We could feel in the air that an animal was following very close. We had no trouble following the track left by the elephants. The distinctive footprints in the earth were evidence of a peaceful movement of the herd. The giants left the dry and sunburned open fields and took to a jungle, thickly overgrown with lanais and bushes. For two to three hours of intense walking, we had covered enough distance to make up for the meandering of the elephants that we pursued. We could come upon them at any moment. The heat in the areas, blackened by the recent fires, was indescribable. When we entered among the black and burned plants, it seemed that the temperature doubled in degrees. Our water was coming to an end and our honey guides tried to preserve what we had carried with us for this long haul. At last, Leo gave us a sign that he had seen something in the jungle. We all came to attention. We had to be careful. Though we moved very carefully, the dry leaves and twigs that covered the earth gave away our presence. At about 60 meters, we noticed among the trees the black backs of the elephants, relaxed and calmly standing in the cool shadows. While we were moving towards them, we were not exactly noiseless. So we were ready to come upon an enormous mass of meat and bone exploding through the brush in our direction at any second. It's not easy to determine the size of the sleeping elephant's tusks through the thick branches. Leo climbed the nearest tree to better examine the mature bull elephant. The distance between our little group and the elephants was no more than 20 meters. We were all watching the great animals, holding our breath. Very slowly, I approached the tree Leo had climbed and I checked for the elephant's tusks again. I didn't see them, but I felt that our hunting guide was trying unsuccessfully to climb down from his observation point. I quickly put my shoulder under him to support his weight because I imagined in horror him falling to the ground on the dry branches at that very moment. Though we were careful not to make noise, the elephants felt our presence, and with a wild roar, they disappeared, accompanied by the deafening cracks of breaking trees and bushes. A sleeping bull at 10 yards. <laughs>
10 yards. One was sleeping on its side. Unbelievable, I've never been that close for an elephant. Lying flat, snoring. The big one was broadside, 30 yards, perfect shot. Um, I saw a bit of a tusk on the right. Had he had any kind of tusks, we would have had him for sure. It was impossible to catch up with them, though the running herd's track in the jungle was compared to a well-cleaned alley in a park. We abandoned the herd and tired and almost exhausted, we started our long, hot and dry journey back towards camp. 18 kilometers of marching on the burned and red hot earth were ahead of us. Our water dried up long before we reached camp, and the only circumstance which relieved, to some extent, this hellish passage was the advent of nightfall and the cooling temperatures. The next morning, I woke to the heavenly smell of freshly fried eggs, sausages, and hot coffee. coffee, sausages, and eggs. Full meal deal. Oh, homemade bread. Full meal deal. After yesterday's tortuous march, we decided to change tactics and embark on a blind search among the great swamps along the Zambezi. The enormous areas flooded by the river were now covered by tall ferns, the papyrus and can be passed only by a cross-country ATV Argo vehicle. The fog that hid the surrounding landscape from our view soon withdrew, and endless fields of tall green papyrus opened before us. Even with the caterpillar-tracked Argo, it was a real challenge to find elephants among the three-meter-tall wall of vegetation. Moving slowly along the mostly dry swamp, we watched for some tracks of the big animals. Not being able to see further than two meters away from the sides of the Argo, coupled with the quite deafening engine's noise, it would be a stroke of luck indeed if we saw elephants before they trampled us. After a two-hour march among the tall plants, we entered an endless field of one meter high thick grass. Before too long, the engine made a sinister crackle and stopped. Leo rolled up his sleeves and took to repairing the broken vehicle. Horrified, I watched him mercilessly taking out part after part from the guts of the engine. In the middle of nowhere, I anticipated the nightmare of an all-night passage through the impassable swamps. When Leo surprised me, I knew from the steady noise of the engine that I have saved from the nightmares that could have overtaken me. We lost all idea of time and direction among the four meter tall plants when all of a sudden we saw scores of birds flying in the blue sky above us. It was a sure sign that there were elephants somewhere nearby. There was no doubt at all. First we saw the great dust clouds which swirled in the wind rising dozens of meters above the swamp grass. Next we could discern in the distance the running herd of elephants. We drove the vehicle after the herd, which disappeared into the papyrus. At about 200 meters from them, we stopped the engine and examined the worried herd. The wind was blowing from the direction of the elephants, so they could no longer sense our presence. But despite that, they checked out the air incessantly with their trunks. Hidden by the grass, quite thin in that particular place, we got off the machine and made for the mature bull that was closest to us. Bent low to the ground, we moved quickly after Leo. He stopped from time to time to check if the bull elephant had noticed us and continued with a quick maneuver after that. In minutes, we were already at 100 meters from the elephant, who was peacefully grazing in the reeds directly in front of us. To pass the last meters, Separating us from our coveted trophy, we had to sneak through some dried and brittle reeds. The noise that we were producing warned the peacefully grazing animal. It turned to us and assumed a very threatening position. His eyes fixed on us, and the widespread ears 
promised that bad things were about to happen. The elephant was severely wounded and it was a question of time for him to die of his injuries from the big two blade. If I had one more opportunity, I would try to quicken his death. But the elephant went into the ferns and thus, securing his rear, turned to us and took a defensive position. A frontal shot into him was totally pointless. The only thing I could do was watch and wait. Well, this is uh, all that's left of our arrow. You can see that we got lots of penetration. Unfortunately, the arrow was just uh, too far back. When he turned, he just kept going instead of turning and stopping. That's what I expected. So the height was great, penetration was great, but it's too far back, so it's hard to say what damage that arrow would do with that kind of penetration. And the elephant's gone into this thick papyrus here, which is a really dangerous situation. And we gotta wait. And Leo told me, he said he's gonna turn, he's gonna turn, draw, he's gonna turn. Of course, he's been telling me that all week, but um, I should have let him a little, and I didn't. So, we have a wounded elephant here, and we're going to give him some time, and then go in and see what we have to do. We've got the 458, and maybe I'll get another shot, but uh, time will tell. A couple of hours later, we followed the herd. It was not hard to follow the track, well beaten by the elephant's heavy steps. We expected that the badly wounded elephant would seek shelter and protection with the other elephants. But when we found the herd, we were disappointed to see that the wounded elephant was not with them. Obviously the wound was very serious and he had been left behind. We watched the group for a long time the elephants had noticed us long ago, and it was getting dangerous for us now. The mothers, guarding their young calves, could easily run us over, so we carefully withdrew. After a short discussion, we decided that it was quite dangerous to pursue the wounded elephant among the tall reeds. Visibility was almost zero. First, not more than a couple of hours had passed from the time of the shot, and second, it would get dark soon, 
to pursue a wounded elephant in the swamps after nightfall is certain suicide. Early the next day, we resume the pursuit. On the trail, moving among the tall reeds, we startled two hippopotamus that ran away with discontented roars. We followed the wounded elephant's track, examining carefully the surrounding marshes. And there, five meters to the right from the trail left by the main herd, we found the dead elephant bull. Lying on its side, this very special animal was waiting for his defeater in this face-to-face -face battle on the swamps of the Zambezi River. In the next episode of The Ultimate Shot, we shall take you into the heart of Europe. There in the mountains and the valleys of the Trachean kings, we will track down a big fallow deer then move to Hungary in our quest for a special opportunity and ultimate shot. We will see several action-packed hits on Manchurian Sika deer, fallow deer, and red deer. Enjoy this episode that has and adds the historical flavors of aged Hungarian wines and centuries of hunter's hospitality to the emotions of exciting hunting adventures.